Hey guys, and welcome back to FamCast. This is episode 14. I'm Trevor, and I'm here with a special guest today. We've got uh, Ben Sack with us. Hey, <laughs> it's nice and, being uh, on here. Absolutely, glad to have you back. He was on for our uh, whitewashing podcast, so I uh, definitely get to have him back on the show. This one's so, going to be more fun. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah, this one will be a little more uh, upbeat. This one will be much less sensitive for sure. <laughs> so with, with that being said, um, I wanted to come in here and talk about Star Wars today. Um, obviously, there's there's a lot to say about Star Wars um, between the, the movies, the shows, comics, uh, the novels. There's a, a ton to talk about, but we're going to just kind of see where, where things go. wanted to start off with a little bit of Episode Eight talk. Um, that's kind of been on everyone's mind recently. Lots of new rumors are flying around, uh, lots of pictures. We just had Force Friday, uh, I think last week. So all the new toys came out, which revealed uh, some more details for us as well. Uh, so with that being said, uh, let's start off with uh, what we saw last uh, last week at Force Friday. What were some of the things that uh, you saw that kind of interested you, Ben? Um, man, Porgs are really marketable. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Uh, porgs were made to sell toys, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Um, I don't know. I think they. I think they're pretty smart these days about like people learning plot points from toys. I think they. I think they got that stuff pretty locked down. Honestly, there wasn't really much that like. I don't know. Did you? Did you learn anything from the marketing? Um, I probably wouldn't say learned anything, but I know we. I forget who it was from, but we actually got a toy. I think it was Think Geek actually that has a um, like an action figure of Snoke now, and so we actually got to see him in person and not just like a hologram. And he's like just this old messed up dude, like a regular sized dude, not like a you know twenty foot tall guy. Right, <laughs> um, right. <laughs> big surprise there. Spoilers. <laughs> I always but, felt um, like his neck was long, but it's not actually long. I don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. I kind of. I feel like I had that impression in my head too. I don't really know where it came from. Yeah, right. <laughs> but he's uh he's just like this old dude and he has this yellow yellow like potato sack around him. Like it it, was, it just looked kind of weird. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, he's got he's got a he's got a a, a golden robe. He wears a robe for sure. Right. Um, I don't know. Yeah. He's, it's an interesting costume. That's that's for sure. I think it just caught me off guard because it was just um not what I was expecting. Like he, this is the guy that, I, uh, as far as I can tell, he's kind of behind the the dark side um, up up at this point, um, since Palpatine's gone and he's he, who knows how he took over. Um, but that's that's my impression of him. Like this is the dude that's in charge of the dark side of the Force right now. Yeah, I I think he, I I feel like they're moving towards like he just came from from somewhere deep in space that we don't know but that he's rich i don't i i i, I want to know what his motives are really like we don't know what why he wants to do anything other than he's just a bad guy yeah and i'd i'd like to learn more about his motives for sure right exactly like ev- everything was cleared up at the end of six like oh yeah they they blew up the death star but then you kind of get into like okay so what did the the remainder of the empire do at that point Right. And apparently it turned into the first order, but like I don't know, like your your empire kind of crumbled, so what are you trying to do now? Right. Like, I it, it took quite a few steps back. So what is your goal to just do the same thing again or <laughs> Right. I uh well the the new Battlefront game is supposed to explain like some of what happened between the 6 and 7. Yeah, I'm really excited for for Battlefront 2 on um for that reason just because we get to see a little bit more of um what happens between 6 and 7, but also that we get to see a different side of things too. Seems like more often than not it's always, you know, the the quote-unquote good guys. But you know, the the good guys are pretty um well, I don't know. In in Star Wars it, it's not as um fluid, I guess, but to to the Empire like they're the good guys, you know? Like they they, well, they don't see themselves I mean, the rebels as the bad are guys. totally like terrorists. Like that's... right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it's all uh, it's all up for debate. I mean, obviously, in my opinion, the the empire's evil. I mean, I think most people would say that. Right. But, you know, uh, different different beliefs, I guess. Um, <laughs> I mean, they what... they are t- a totally a terrorist group. They destroy a large government, two large government <laughs> buildings, <laughs> right. by like blowing them up and everybody inside them, like. Right. So, and on one side you've got this this terrorist organization, and then you have this like fascist um, 
uh, movement, uh, trying to like control the entire galaxy. So like, who who do we really root for here? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it, yeah, it's really cool to uh, that they're exploring the other side of that. That's yeah, it's about time. <laughs> right. You're always like a rebel pilot, or you're like, I don't know, a Jedi uh, because lightsabers. But you know, right. And it, it's almost always like just retelling the same stories that we know. Like we're always either like playing through the movies. Or like in the case of Battlefront, we're just doing you know the the battles that we went through without any actual storyline. Right. Uh, but this time it seems like we're actually not saying that those battles are are bad by any means. Like I I fucking love Battlefront, so um, um, it'll just be interesting to get some story alongside that as well. For sure, yeah. It's 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 a really neat spot they're filling in. You know, it's uh when when they got rid of all the canons like everything that was canon at one point there's there's not as much like background story and i don't think it's as interesting right now so it's nice that they're like filling up those big gaps i hope they do more right. of that <laughs> they need to like oh you know those like tens of thousands of years that we had that was really cool oh yeah scrap all that <laughs> right. um now you just have this like 60 year period that we can work within i it's... mean i get it it was convoluted but like oh for sure <laughs> absolutely but man, I just go back to playing Old Republic for the first time, and that's sure. just like it just opens everything up, man. You're like, wow, this is like way beyond like, uh, the you know the Skywalkers. Like this goes back, you know, thousands of years. And my thing is like, even things that would be super easy to keep canon, like Republic Commando. Like, wh- why, why not? Why? That's, right. that's the like, easiest. That wasn't hurting anything. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that game was so cool. <laughs> right. I'd, I'd love I... to see more of the uh, the Republic Commandos. Um, just anything really like you said just filling in the gaps with um you know some more more extended universe content yeah yeah i don't foresee it happening but i would love to see them go back to like old republic and maybe do something with that down the road yeah i i I don't know with uh doesn't uh doesn't ea have the rights to old republic in the first place they they do like their ea uh and bioware made or i i know at least I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and double check myself after we record this. I know Bioware made uh, Old Republic, so that leads me to believe that EA had a hand in that as well, almost almost 100. Um, percent So I'll fact check myself after this. But yeah, I feel like they, I feel like it's not out of the question. Is all I'm getting at. Like I yes, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they um and um not only did they do that, but they've got the rights to all Star Wars games right now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So basically, it's like all these games are in their hands, and I feel like they're. We talked about this previously. Like, I feel like they they just aren't doing anything with it. Yeah. Not, like, I know they're working hard on Battlefront too, but don't you have like multiple teams that like work on different games at the same time? Yeah, for sure. That's why it was cool when uh, like Lucasfilm was kind of its like independent like own little thing. It could work with whoever it wanted, whenever it. There weren't all these like messy contracts. It was like it was a property that was uh, companyless almost. And now, yeah, like, absolutely. Now, 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 whatever Disney is who is working with, you know, right? And you don't really see that anymore. Um, you you don't really see franchises, um, be made or like games in in general. You don't see those made by different companies, really. Yeah. Like especially we we have a not to get off track too much. We have a, like a Spider Man game coming out, and it's being done. Oh, by I know. I'm excited for that one. Yeah, it'll it'll be really good, and it's it's something that. I don't know. I feel like you always see um, games by like Marvel Studios, or it might be done by like Warner Brothers if it's DC. But you don't see anything um, that's like they offer up to a different company to kind of give their take on. So I, I remember playing uh, like back in the day. We had it was like DroidWorks or something for a computer. Um, so, like some really crappy PC game. <laughs> but I don't know. That, like I think that was my first experience with uh, with Star Wars besides the movies. But that led into like pod racing and a, a bunch of other really cool video games we just don't really get that anymore which is sad i mean I, I, for sure but i mean i think back to like pod racing and like that that wasn't the only racing game made for episode one like there were yeah. a lot of like shit that came with like the oh, good yeah. stuff <laughs> yeah there's that one where they all had like big heads and stuff yeah oh, that's the one i'm thinking was. of I, I don't even remember what it's called <laughs> probably for the best (laughs) there's probably a reason for that yeah they had a lot i feel like episode one in general like probably has the most games crazy yeah like out of any star wars uh movie yeah it was out of control yeah like it it, it's not like that anymore like when there's a star wars movie you can't like read the book a month before the movie comes out 
Like, it's all, like, spoiler-free until the movie comes out. Which I'm I'm okay with. Um, wh- and with, with that being said, um, kind of getting back on track with Episode Eight, we really haven't seen a whole lot for this movie only being three months away. Yeah. We've seen... Th- We've seen the uh, the one teaser. Tra- I won't even call it like a full trailer. It was more like a teaser trailer. Yeah. Um, we saw that back at um, Celebration. And other than that, like we haven't even seen much marketing for it other than Force Friday. Like I don't see any trailers online, not on TV, nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the trailers, uh, the TV spots were December-ish for Force Awakens. But I definitely oh, okay. feel like we'll get another trailer... And like by October, by the end of October for sure. And if if anything, um, at least now that they're all um, that they're all owned by the same company, we'll definitely see something from uh, Thor Ragnarok because that'll be early November. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I didn't, I didn't even think about that. But even then, like that's cutting it really close. I don't know. I. It, it the movie's gonna come out regardless of whatever trailers they release. So it, I don't know. In the big picture, it doesn't it doesn't matter. I just want to see more of this movie. <laughs> but at the same time, I don't want to see too much. It's like they need to find that healthy balance of like, all right, tease me enough to get like more excited about this, but don't show me so much that I feel like I'm watching the Spider-Man Homecoming trailer. I'm like, oh, do I really need to see this movie now? I I feel like. They know, I mean, obviously they know that, like, they wouldn't, they don't have to make a single trailer and people would still be there opening day. It would make a billion and a half dollars, you know. Oh, 100%. Yeah, they don't, <laughs> they don't need to sell Star Wars and they don't even need to sell Marvel movies at this point. Like, it's all just, it's all just self hype. Right. Yeah. So, like, I, I, I feel like they're just giving, okay, people want it, whatever. Here's like four scenes chopped up with music <laughs> right <laughs> yep just throwing one new scene of bb8 doing something funny and cool that's right. our trailer leave us alone <laughs> <laughs> we've got porgs now <laughs> those are cute right do you know what they are no but they're cute right <laughs> <laughs> what purpose do they serve well we've got one in the millennium falcon with chewbacca so there's a that's his new buddy that's uh <laughs> that's our new uh comedic relief now <laughs> Go buy it now, please. All right. <laughs> In any form you can. Stuffed <laughs> animals, action figures, pillows. <laughs> yeah, the, the merchandising is out of control, man. I My mom gave me a, a fucking uh, Darth Vader toaster. Like, the, the fact that that exists <laughs> is just out of control. Yeah, it is. I feel like, especially with episode seven, like when they were branding, um, I think it was like oranges or tangerines <laughs> yeah. as like BB 8 tangerines and oranges. Like, Oh my gosh, like we need to cut back on this guys. <laughs> You've gone too far. It's gotten too far at this point. I think it's crazy that they're they're trying to sell these movies before they even come out. Like that's a crazy marketing strategy that I think could only work with like Star Wars. Oh yeah. Like you don't even know who these characters are or what they have to do with the movie. But there's people buying action figures for them left and right. <laughs> yeah. Like Halloween the Lego costumes sets. with October coming up, like <laughs> right. Like I, I don't know who this is, but he'll be your new favorite character because <laughs> that's who mom bought your costume as. You'll so. love him. He looks cool, yeah. doesn't he? <laughs> it's like he get he gets killed off in like the first ten minutes of the movie. <laughs> Some like random guy. Right. Oh, that 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 reminds me. Like in the marketing, um, there's been uh, a lot of stuff about a character that we've only heard referred to as DJ thus far. Oh, um, Del Toro's character. Yeah, exactly. We haven't seen like diddly squat from him except in things in the marketing. Right. Now, because I I've heard the only like the only things that I've heard from that from the very minimal information that we've received is that he's kind of like a in a gray area. He's not really on either side. Yeah, yeah. I've heard he's a hacker. Oh, okay. Yeah. That'd be. I'm sure that'll be beneficial to you, to both sides, but I'm I'm not really sure what what role he's gonna play other than just mysterious mercenary guy. Yeah, I feel like that's totally what he is. Like, um, yeah, just like a Boba Fett good guy, <laughs> so they can right. sell toys. <laughs> right. And then the the other new character um, 
and I forget her, I forget her name, uh, but she she's like an engineer for the resistance. Oh, yeah, Rose. I don't the oh, ac- yeah. the actress's name. I but don't apparently remember. she's a I've heard that she actually plays a pretty big role. Uh, obviously we don't know to what extent, but everyone said that uh, it's a pretty big role at this point. I I know that she's definitely with Finn. I know that for sure. Her and Finn go on an adventure. Okay. Um I know at some point they go undercover um as like imperial people. But oh, interesting. Uh, that's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, it, there's not really a whole lot we, we know about this movie, so I, I know the majority of it's just going to be speculating. Um, so what, with, with speculating being said, um, there, there is a lot of speculation to, with this movie because we didn't get a whole lot of answers last time um, in, in episode seven. So in this one, we've got all, kind of an, uh, all kinds of answers that, uh, that everyone's wanting um, as far as you know, who's... Um, who are Ray's parents? Uh, who's Snoke? Uh, what role does Luke play in everything? Why did he go away in the first place? Um, so with, with all those being said, um, what do you think we're going to find out in Episode 8 uh, as far as those rumors are concerned, if anything? Uh, I don't think... I think Ray's parentage is going to be like such an uninteresting answer for most people. It's... I don't know... I, I I haven't really thought about it too much because I don't think it's going to be like Luke Skywalker. I don't think it's going to be... I don't think it's going to be anybody that we know or care about or it's been built up to. She's just going to be somebody. She's just going to be somebody that the Force uh, gave birth to. I don't know. Kind of like Anakin. Right. Um, Yeah. I, I, I don't know. What do you think? It's kind of hard to say. Like it's It's been hyped up so much. I feel like if they, like if they didn't have an answer that like pleased the fans, like it was if it wasn't someone we already knew, people would just be like, "What the fuck?" Like they've, like they've even like kept it quiet to the, like I understand that you need to keep it quiet, but at this point it's like you're keeping it quiet for a reason. <laughs> so I feel like when people find out, or if that was the case, they'd be like, "Oh well, that wasn't as exciting as I wanted it to be." I feel like that's um, totally J.J. Abrams' fault, though. Like, the only reason anybody cares about her backstory is because he made it a mystery. Yeah. Yeah, he really did. Like, it it, it kind of feeds into... Like, the way that that movie was done kind of feeds into those rumors, though. Like, you you just feel like she has to she has to be connected to someone. Like, when she picked up that lightsaber... Like, that felt like more than just, like, her connection with the Force. Like, that was something deeper. At least in... In my mind, I I still want to believe that she's attached to someone that we already know. Whether it's I don't I don't foresee her being a Skywalker. What, what, what personally. would work though? I, that's my thing. Like, give me a give me a character that it would work with. Like, uh, Luke Skywalker doesn't work for me because she gets deserted on a desert planet and works for a horrible person. Like, if Luke Skywalker did that, he's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Right, like you know what that's like, man. Like, <laughs> like you were on a desert planet and did like shit work. Like, <laughs> come on. Right. <laughs> um. So I, I don't think it would be Luke. Um. I don't think it would be Han or Leia. Um. That just would be because, weird. like, right. Like it, it would be <laughs> unless it, like somehow she gave birth to twins and somehow didn't know about and it. Nobody ever brings it up to like, her at no, any point. Right. I was like, hey, let's just like sneak one of these babies while she's like screaming. And like just like put it put it on a desert planet. That'll be funny. It'll be a prank. Right. Um, <laughs> um, so I I don't know. I don't I can't think of anything that would work. I know people have also said um, uh, like she's a Kenobi. Like how does that make sense? Like how does old man Kenobi have like um, like two generations at this point? Like that? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. The age the obviously... age doesn't work for that. Right. Because he would have to have um, you know a son or a daughter, and then that son or daughter would have to have another kid to be Ray, And it just doesn't like, that's a, a little too far fetched for me. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. No, no way. I, yeah. The, the timeline doesn't match up there. Um, yeah. I think the only reason we hear from Obi-Wan is just like, it's the force. Like, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm mean, just like the at the end of, <laughs> right. Just like at the end of six, like we see, you know, you, you see all the, all the Jedis that, um, uh, Luke has kind of interacted with uh, in ghost form, so that's just them reaching out in the force. So maybe that was just Obi Wan reaching out through uh, through the lightsaber for 
who knows what reason? I, I don't know. I feel like it's just, it's just reaching at this point. I want it to be someone, but nothing I can think of makes sense. Yeah, I, th- that's why it has to be somebody that nobody knows or cares about. And yeah. th- like that's, that's an answer nobody wants to hear. <laughs> but... <laughs> Which sucks. Yeah, it's, it's, nobody wants that to happen. But I mean, what, what reasonable theory is there? And if, I've got if anyone one. I've ha- got one. She's she's the daughter of Boba Fett. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Oh <It's>, shit. <laughs> right. Oh my gosh, it's finally happening. <laughs> like it I don't know. It's um it's uh Sebulba's um niece's <laughs> uh step cousin. Like I <laughs> there's just nothing that adds up. So I I think that's one that I want to happen, but I I don't really feel like there's any uh anything there um but and at the same time while i feel that way about uh ray i feel like uh, snoke's origins are just as not mysterious again that's like jj abrams problem he made you think this mysterious guy he built them all mysterious he's just some dude from like right. deep space who's here to fuck some shit up <laughs> right and it it just it adds fuel to the flame when all these people come up with all these crazy theories because yeah. then like it it kind of hurts the directors if they already have something in mind. Yeah. But then, like, all these other people come up with these theories that some people might like better. Yeah. It's like, well, sorry, that's not what we did. You you get stuck with what we did because we we're making the movie. Yeah, let um, them tell their story. And if and if you've got a better story afterwards, I'll, I'll hear it. But in, until then, like, just, just let it be. Just let it be. Right. <laughs> and that's why, if I remember right, that's why George Lucas didn't want to, like, make any more. Because people basically kept shitting on him. Fans are awful. <laughs> yeah, like, pretty much. Like, the, the fans are telling him how to tell his story. And it's like, uh, no, I'm, I'm not dealing with this. Like, George I feel Lee the same way. such a badass. <laughs> <laughs> like, that, that has to be so shitty to create this really cool universe. And you try and tell a story and someone's like, no, that's wrong. Yeah. <laughs> it's not wrong. I thought of it. It's in my mind. <laughs> right. This is how I wanted to make it. Fuck you. Right. Like, make when you, people make complain your own about the green screen and like the prequels, I get it. But that's that's how he wanted to make it. Yeah. You, you got to deal with it. That's, yep. that's, that's the way the prequels are now. <laughs> yeah. I don't. And I've, I've never. I'm not a very big. Um, I'm a, or, let me step back. I'm a pretty passive person myself, so I don't I don't like to really hate on the prequels all that much. Like there, I enjoyed them when they first came out when I was a kid, and for sure. I can still I can still watch them now. I, yeah, I don't know. I appreciate them for what they are. So the the fact that people just go out there and just like shit on movies just to shit on movies, I just don't get it, man. It it doesn't bring me any pleasure to like bring something else down. That's a very good attitude to have, man. <laughs> <laughs> Um, now watch it. It's going to be in like two weeks. I'm going to do a review on something. I'm going to be like, this was shitty. I don't see how anyone could like this. And then yeah, like, they'll, they'll come back and bite you in the ass real soon. <laughs> right. Yeah. Wait, wait 10 years when we're still doing podcasts and someone's going to like harass me over this on Twitter. <laughs> um, but no, I, I think that, um, that leads into a, a good point on, on Snoke, um, talking about his theories. Cause I've seen, I've seen a few crazy ones there too. Like some people are like, oh, it's it's Mace Windu. He survived being thrown out the window and now he's back on the dark side. I like, saw oh. the Mace Windu theory published in a magazine. I was aghast <laughs> that that actually made it to fucking paper. That that they wow. wasted ink trying to like <laughs> cram that in their shitty Snoke theories. Uh, right. Now the the only one that like I like, and I think it's the most common theory is the uh, Darth Plagueis theory. That one's that one's so cool. It it's it, it works too, but only like fans would know. Everybody else who's not like my parents would go watch that movie and just be like, "Huh?" <laughs> oh, right, exactly. <laughs> the the one time in Episode Three where that name was mentioned. Oh yeah, now I remember. <laughs> Remember he tells that really long story? I know you fell asleep, <laughs> but he mentions the a really... name during that. Yeah, no, like, it's totally cool. It's a cool idea, but I don't think, like, they're gonna... That's that's not sexy enough to sell from Disney. Like, they need, they need grandparents to come and see the next one, and they're not gonna come see it if it's Darth Plagueis... And no, nope. right. <laughs> like, it, that that'd be more a fan theory or a fan uh, service, if anything. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't. I, 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 his motivations have to be um, something that people, everybody can connect with, though. And if it's just 
if it's just Darth Plagueis, then it's not not everybody not not all the audience is going to connect with it and i feel like right that's why they, they aren't going to go that route but that's that is that is my favorite snoke theory because it's it's the most interesting yeah and at least that one's believable unlike the like the ray parentage theories like this one actually has and i think it's because we don't know anything about plagueis that makes it more more believable because there's nothing really that ties him down to say otherwise right yeah yeah it's true um, as far as some uh, some other theories, um, I, another one that I, that comes to mind is why Luke's on this planet to begin with, and why he's kind of just like avoiding everyone else. Like, why why isn't he with the resistance, like helping fight the First Order? So, um, I think we've talked about this in the past as well. I I believe you you said you think he um, feels guilty for maybe training uh, Ben Ben Solo um, and him turning to the dark side. Like maybe he he wasn't good enough to to save him. Yeah, I, I feel like the general idea is going to be that um, Luke Skywalker trained Kylo Ren or Ben Solo and Ben Solo went bad and Luke Skywalker was like, shit, every time we do this, someone goes bad and things just get worse. Like, right. I, we need to stop doing this. I'm going to be the last Jedi. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> It's time for the Jedi to end. Yeah, like that's 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 how I feel. Like those things fit into the context of you know, like the history of what's been going on up to this point. Like we don't know sure. much about the movie, but like from the title and like the trailer line, obviously, I just yeah. feel like he he goes, well, that was a bad idea. Let's not do this ever again. <laughs> right, and I I think from what we've seen from some flashbacks too, you see like the. Um, the Knights of Ren with like some flames and stuff. And even, I think you even see like a scene with R2 and Luke, like kind of in a, like a place that's on fire. So it's almost like the, the Knights of Ren maybe came and like burned down a, a Jedi temple, all the Jedi temples. I don't know. So maybe he feels guilty for that too. Like not only did he lose um, his nephew, uh, nephew, right? Yeah. Nephew. And then, um, he also lost all these other um, kids. I'm assuming that he was training, or other adults, whoever he was training at these temples. <laughs> well, I know technically the guy, you know, the guy that gets stabbed in the like force back sequence, yeah. who's like about to hit Ray. I know he's technically credited as a clan member. That sounds really bad, and the yeah, it does. <laughs> planet, but like, <laughs> uh, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'm not even sure if. Um, it, it, it is a temple, you know, I think maybe either Luke Skywalker fucked some shit up when he was like fighting the Knights of Ren or the Knights of Ren just like fucked shit up. Right. But I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily a temple. Like I feel like that's a leap that a lot of people have made. That's not necessarily established. We see a lot okay. of dead bodies, but you know, they could be from anywhere. Right. Yeah, it doesn't have to be temple bodies. It could just be civilian bodies or <laughs> Right. Yeah, who who knows what bodies they are. It could just be like some planet. Yeah, Kylo got a little bit drunk downtown and just wrecked shit. Right. He <laughs> started thinking about how his uh how uh he has this this hatred for sand and he just wants to go like kill people now. <laughs> I hate sand. It's so coarse. I just want to. I just want to destroy a village now. I don't know where these urges are coming from. That would be great. What if? What if? Ky, uh, what if Snoke's motivation is that he hates sand? The planet he came from had too much sand, and he hates sand. <laughs> <laughs> and he hates Rey because she came from sand. <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it'll be interesting to see what uh, what actually comes of all that. Um, the other. Um, thing I had on just on my list here as far as what we saw uh, last week at Force Friday were some of the new ships um, and I think some of it might have even been before Force Friday um, but one of them is the new uh, walkers uh, that the First Order has oh yeah okay they have like these like gorilla front front feet so yeah I guess they don't get like knocked over um, but they look pretty sweet like I always like the walkers they were always pretty cool um, other than they're like pretty obviously like they have a pretty obvious weakness like all right, let's wrap string around their legs, and then they trip, and we just shoot their necks. Right. <laughs> um, so it, I'm, it'll be cool to see how these, um, how they kind of learn from their mistakes and evolve these uh, these walkers. Yeah, and think of how cool that sequence would be. Like, okay, a again, I get it. People are going to say it's a remake. 
fuck you. Um, I, I think it's cool that they get to kind of redo that idea, but with like modern technology. Because back then they they were dealing with like claymation and shit and oh, models. Yeah. The stuff they can do now is going to be like way cooler. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like just like you said, the the claymation and the um. Now I like the fact that they use like the like the puppets and everything still. Like I feel I think that just adds something special to the movies. Um, but there's but I, a nice even... blend. There's a nice like the, you can have like puppets and like practical effects, but like. I don't think a character like Maz necessarily works as well as a puppet. Oh no, no, I don't. I don't think so at all. Like it doesn't bring that character to life as, as much as they they needed it to. Exactly. So I, yeah. Um, and even like just talking about effects in general, like I even saw Mark Hamill tweeted something out about the the scene where he's hanging from the cave and he reaches for the lightsaber and it comes to him. He said they actually like they had him like throw it and then they just like reverse the footage reverse it nice yeah (laughs) like just how like that's just so simple and to think that like we have all these effects that are just completely different now it'll be cool to see what all they they do with it like we've already seen how how great a a new star wars movie can be um you know post uh, episode three um even even just that time gap how much has improved yeah yeah definitely I uh, like Star Wars has always been like a special effects spectacular. Why wouldn't you take advantage of CG? Like Right. I I I think it's cool that they're revisiting that idea especially with the technology they have now. I understand it's a remake. I get it. I hear you. But Right. <laughs> yeah, like we were we were talking about before the uh, the podcast started the uh, the whole hero's journey uh storytelling arc. Um, how, you know, this person kind of starts off being really boring. Then there's that call to adventure. Um, then they're like, no, I don't want to do that. But then like they find their mentor and something like gets them to accept that call to adventure. And it's just this whole cycle. So I feel like we're, we kind of saw the beginning of that with Ray. Um, not that she really had a, she didn't really have a denial for like a call to adventure. Like she was waiting on that shit to happen. Like, obviously, she's, like, really curious about her, her heritage and just getting off that, that, that shithole of a planet. Um, but I think we, we are seeing a lot of similar, similarities uh, between Episode 4 and Episode 7. And I think we'll probably see some more with Episode 5 and Episode 8. Um, one, one that comes to mind is Rey going off to this planet to meet this, this mentor, Luke yeah. Skywalker. Yeah, that's um, a good and one. From, from what we've seen from the, uh, the, uh, the teaser... Um, he is going to be be training her, which isn't. I don't think it's a surprise to anyone. But it, it's it is very similar to Luke going to Dagobah with Yoda to get his training there. So I'm interested to see how it's going to be similar, how it's going to be different, um, especially since you know that scene in the cave where he's like, "It's time for the Jedi to end." So if it's if it's time for the Jedi to end, why is he training her, or how is he training her? Yeah, um, I don't I, like. Do you, how spoiler spoilery do you want me to get? I kind of like have a general idea of one thing that hey, kind at, of at, I might know happens. <laughs> in at this point in time, I I don't think anything's set in stone. That's true. Um, so I'm 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 cool with with uh, we'll just call it rumors for now. So let's okay. let's hear this let's hear this rumor. I heard a rumor that she has to fight a sea monster, a creature of some kind. I don't know if it's necessarily a sea monster. Sea monster. But she fights like a, a a monster on the island, and that shows her that shows Luke that she actually wants to do this sort of thing. Um, there's behind the scenes stuff of her like diving into water, um, and there's like some weird uh, like seal looking things that showed up in like a children's book that hmm. were uh, on on the island. So I I. I I, I've heard a lot of rumblings about that. Okay. But that's that's weird. That's such a weird idea. Yeah, that that seems. Un, yeah, it just seems very like almost like Greek mythology in a way, to where like you have to like pass these trials and and then I will see that you're worthy for my training. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, Yoda kind of did a similar thing, right? Well, that's he acted true. All goofy and like. Yeah, Luke was like, fuck this old guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And then Yoda's like, okay, whatever you say, man. Yeah, I am Yoda, bitch. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, so I I, I I, think 
I've heard a lot about that, but I don't know. What do you think? What have you heard? What, what what's going on? I haven't really, I haven't heard a whole lot. Um, but just something that comes to mind, um, for those that aren't familiar, there's a concept of being like a gray Jedi to where you're just kind of like middle of the road, like more neutral. And I think the, the only canon one um, at this point since the extended universe is gone is Ahsoka. I think she's I think she's considered a great Jedi, so I don't know if Luke's going to go down that path. So maybe being like, hey, um, you know, if, if we're all Jedi, then that's not really bringing balance to the Force. That's just kind of like weighing it more heavily on one side. So maybe we just need to be like middle of the road. Like just, I don't know. So yeah, I don't know no, if that's interesting. I, I, I hadn't I, even thought about that. So it would be cool, but then if, if they're still considered great Jedi, then it's not really getting rid of the Jedi. So I don't, I don't know what he wants. Like, does he, does he think people should just, he can't think that people should just abandon the force. Like it's, it's done so much for him and people around him. I can't see him just forsaking it altogether. So what, what f- role will the force have um, for him and whoever he trains going forward? I, I do wonder why he's on the island in the first place. Like, what happened that's so terribly bad that um, he had to become a hermit on an island in the middle of nowhere? Um, right. Yeah. I, if, if I remember right, there like there's actually a Jedi temple on this island as well. Is that correct? There could be. I, I, um, I know there's a I know there's a giant tree. I I know there was a giant tree set built. Okay. Um uh, that's I, I, that's that's what yeah. I know. I know there's a set with a tree on it. <laughs> cuz one other thing that I read and this was I think this was along with like the the porgs cuz I was looking into like some of the new creatures that they've revealed. There's also um they they kind of look like fish nuns. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't know how else to describe them. <laughs> that's a good way of they're, describing they're, them. <laughs> right. <laughs> They're, uh, I think they're called caretakers. Yeah, like um, the salamander nun people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, exactly. They're like really short looking. But uh, uh, from what I read, they're actually the caretakers of the temple. So they're not, they themselves aren't force sensitive, but they're they're kind of like the, uh, oh man, I can't even forget yeah, his name like from nuns, Rogue One. Basically. <laughs> yeah. So he's, he himself, or they themselves are not force sensitive, but they still like respect and, and uh, revere the, the force. So... Um, I don't know what, what they're doing there, uh, with this temple, if it's like completely empty and like no one's even like doing anything with it. Um, so why did, you know, what was it about this temple that brought Luke to it? And like you said, why is he not helping his friends fight the first order? My personal theory on why he's there in the first place is like, I have no reason to believe this, but it just makes sense. Like if you're trying to tell a story, but pay homage to George Lucas and what he was doing before. So George Lucas, this, this takes a little bit of context. This is a bit nerdy. Sure. George Lucas, uh, one of, one of the drafts of star Wars was called the journal of the wills. It's uh, it was very convoluted. It's hard to understand. It's not what we ended up with at all, but that was the title, the journal of the wills. And, uh, he always envisioned it like books, like each each thing was like a chapter, right? And that's why we got the episodes. Um, but in the trailer, we see books. We see a hand touch books with the Jedi symbol on it. Right. I, I wonder if they're going to do something like uh, Luke went to Acto to find the Journal of the Wills. Like they're these old Jedi journals that talk about like the true nature of the force or something. I don't know. I think that would be cool. And I, I really hope that's where they're going because when I saw that shot in the trailer, I was like, Oh shit, that would, that's perfect. Yeah. That'd be a really cool way to not necessarily wrap things up, but just kind of almost bring it like full kind of full circle, like to where the, the series kind of got its origin from. If you know, you're saying that's kind of where the, where the star Wars universe kind of began. Yeah, and if they're and if they're gonna start over, that that opens up a, like this big space for you to play around with. Like you you were talking about the uh, old Republic games earlier, just like that opens up that time that you can. Oh, hey, look, you want to know about that? Here's a story oh, from way yeah. way back when. That would be kind of cool to see these these old books come into play and then kind of go back and retouch on them. Like, hey, these are the people that wrote those, or you know, this is what caused these to be written. 
Right, exactly. If you're going to start over, like, that's, I, to me, that's just a great way to, like, give Luke a reason to go, pay homage to George Lucas, and kind of, like, allow you to play around with different timelines. Right, absolutely. And I I was a little worried at first just because we're, we're actually, like, coming to an end. Um, like, the this last trilogy is wrapping up. We're going to get episode nine. Um, but I, I feel like now that Disney owns Lucas, they're not going to let it die. Like, they're they're going to make sure they know how much money this brings in, so they're going to keep bringing in or keep putting out as many movies and games and books. They're going to keep doing whatever they can to make sure that they, they keep milking this as long as possible. Which is good, though, because that means we can do this podcast at uh, Star Wars Episode 79 when we're uh, <laughs> 70 years old. Right, exactly. And I'm okay with it because there, there is so much to tell. It's a, a great universe with great characters and environments and stories to tell. And which, you can really do anything with it. Which is the reason why I'm so disappointed by the Han Solo movie. Like, <sighs> you know, like, I, hey, they might have a great idea. I might go, you know what? That was worth telling. But in the meantime, there's so much more cool shit you could be doing. And I understand Chewbacca. You can sell Chewbacca toys. I get it. <laughs> but, like, make a new Chewbacca. Like, make... The, the universe is vast. Why do we? Why do we have to see Chewbacca being sold again on, on right. the right they're just like stuck in this little safety bubble they're like if we do anything different from what people know no one's gonna buy it like you have to understand this is Star Wars people are gonna buy it as long as you put the Star Wars name on it <laughs> right <laughs> like you you made a porg you made this like little like dove penguin hybrid thing and people are gonna go crazy for it because it's from Star Wars and it's cute what is That's it, all it takes. I don't know it, it had Star Wars on it right so it's um like you said I I'm a little disappointed in in the Han Solo movie as well, but more so in the their choice of cutting um cutting the original directors uh, the guys that did the uh, the Lego movie. Yeah, that was such a um, I, I don't know I, I guess we'll have to wait and see how it turns out. But right. to me, I feel like they were such a good choice, and I, it's 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 a really bizarre thing because. I mean, I guess we could talk about this later, but I mean, real quick, uh, the the director of episode nine was fired, but he was fired before filming even began. Like, it's right. really unusual to be like filming already and then get fired. And, exactly, like, and being like pretty far along in the process, from what I understood. Yeah, like how does it get that far? And then you go, you know what? Ah, we we want Ron Howard on this. Get out of here. <laughs> right, and it, especially since they were going to bring something. I feel like a, just so different than what we were going to see from any other Star Wars movie so far. Because it, it, they, obviously, like with the Lego movies that they've done, um, and I believe 21 Jump Street as well? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh, they, they're they obviously really funny people. And yeah. especially with Han Solo, I feel like they could have done so much with that. But then they were like, oh, we're, we're kind of getting a little too funny. We need to make sure that this is still Star Wars. And it's like, come on, this is your chance. Yeah, Not why only... can't we have a like a, a, a comedy Star Wars movie? Why can't we have that? Why do they all have to be like kind of the same thing, but like not really like especially the spin offs, man. That's where like you get your most freedom. I can all I, I can understand like the episodes, you know, you needing to like do certain things to make them all like cohesive. But a right. spin off movie should just be like open to oh, you wanna make a Star Wars horror movie? Awesome, go for it. Like, <laughs> I would be all about that. That would be really cool, actually. <laughs> yeah. Where do I sign that petition? <laughs> um, it it's just it's sad that they and I I could be wrong, but I feel like it is Disney that kind of like um kind of shelters um these franchises. Like I feel like they probably do that a little bit with Marvel as well, and I, obviously they're definitely doing that with with Star Wars. Because I I even heard that the the main guy. I don't remember his name. The guy that is playing young Han Solo. Like, I heard he was, like, doing so poorly that they even had to, like, give him, like, acting classes. Yeah, I heard that. Like, oh, man. Like, that's... <laughs> so how did he, like, pass the... Like, how do you pass the audition? You and then you're far? like, oh. Yeah, like, how do you get that far and then realize, like, oh, we should probably get this guy some acting skills? It might have been, like... I, I've only seen him in one other movie, and I, 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 he wasn't bad in that movie, but... I feel like it, it might be a situation of, oh, he looks the most like Harrison Ford. Put him in there. Like Yeah. That's not how yeah. 
I, I feel like that is a if that is what happened, that's obviously a pretty poor way of casting. <laughs> but uh, I, I'll uh, I'll try and reserve as much judgment as I can until I actually see it. Which yeah, is uh, next year. Yeah, uh, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It's supposed to come out in May, which I don't I don't think is going to happen. Ron Howard's still filming. Um, maybe I guess I don't know how far along they got with like their special effects stuff, but. I feel like May's really pushing it if they're still filming at this point. I feel like they've done that previously. Like, I feel like they always, like, aim for these, like, May release dates, but then it always gets pe- pushed back to December. Like, I, I feel like that happened with, uh... I could be wrong, but I thought it happened with Episode Seven as well. It did, yeah, totally. Yeah. Okay. Because Star Wars movies yeah. traditionally have come out in May. Um, it's, uh... December's not usually when they came out. I don't know. I think December's a great time for him. Um, oh, yeah. People have time off. They, I mean, you have a lot of people that go to the movies over the holidays anyways, um, which I've never been that person, um, but I, apparently it is a big thing. Um, I, I don't know. Like I, I'm not saying like it's, it's the wrong thing, but I've just, um, I've just never gone to the movies over the holidays. But, yeah, I know it is a big, big time for the theaters. So. It is. It's crazy. I don't know. I, I kind of get it, though. Like, you're hanging out with your family, and you're like, this sucks. What what can we do where we, we can hang out, but we don't have to talk? Oh, <laughs> right. I know. The movies. <laughs> Thanksgiving, too, man. It's crazy. I don't know. Yeah, because we've got, um, yeah, it, it feels like a lot of movies are kind of, or a lot of the, the bigger movies are kind of leaning towards, like, holiday weekends now. Like, you've got Justice League that's coming out um, right before Thanksgiving, I think. Oh, oh, right on. Okay, nice. So I don't know if like that's there, if that's what they aim for, if that's just when you know things just where like the timeline falls. Um, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure that's intentional. Uh, the yeah. the thing I wonder about like with Star Wars being in December is like uh, Avatar is supposed to come out in December some year, <laughs> oh <my laughs> and gosh. like when when that comes out, it'll be like Avatar competing with Star Wars, and I don't know if Disney is gonna want to compete against. Uh, it's um, y- yeah, I don't think they're gonna want to compete against it because it's the, they've got the Avatar part, man, and they've got investments in that. Right, so you're kind of working against yourself at that point. But in my mind, like, they're like ten out of ten times, I will pick Star Wars over Avatar any day in my life. Oh, for sure, <laughs> for sure. But, but like, I, I, I feel like Dis- because Disney has stake in the in both games, there's no reason for them to like trample over the other one. No, not at all. Yeah, it doesn't. It wouldn't make business sense. So um, I'm I'm interested to see. Like I feel like Episode Nine now is gonna be the one that's just pushed back to May of the following year because it's supposed right. to come out. Um, I think it's a December release. Because that's if I remember right, that's the the same year that the Star Wars Park is supposed to open. I believe it's 2019. Um, You're probably so would, right, yeah. I think that's a... Because I mean, that'll be a pretty big year for Star Wars if we're having the, the final the final movie in this entire seven-movie saga. Or, sorry, nine-movie saga. And we have uh, these parks opening, which are apparently going to be amazing, you know, fully interactive and everything. So that'll be a big Star Wars year. I'd be... Honestly, if anything, I feel like they should move Avatar around. Like if just like make it the year of Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. I yeah, yeah. I um I, but Disney doesn't make Avatar. So Avatar has no reason to move. Disney does. Like I I, I feel that's the way it's going to go down. I I think Avatar is going to win December and it'll go back to oh, really? movies. I didn't know that um so does does Disney not own Avatar? No, they just I make they uh, theme parks. <laughs> what? I thought for some like I thought that that was the whole reason they made the theme park was because like they like it was like owned by Disney for some reason. No, Fox Fox owns Avatar. Ew, gross. <laughs> 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 oh man, I feel like I feel like uh, Fox just shouldn't own anything at this point. Just I don't know. Just Sony get... sucks way worse than Fox in my opinion. Sony yeah. should just stay away from everything. They gave us the emoji movie this summer. Thanks, Sony. <laughs> that's that's all we need to say about Sony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we could we could do a completely separate podcast on on Sony and Marvel and and Fox and everything. So I'll 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 leave that uh, that rant to another day. Um, but you 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 did kind of touch on um, 
the director of episode nine uh, being, well, being fired. I've, I've heard it's mutual, but who knows how true that actually is. Um, because I, I was kind of looking forward to him because I really liked what he did with Jurassic World. I'm not familiar with anything else that he's done. Um, just because I'm I'm not as big of a, a movie buff, I, I try and stay as informed as I can. But he seems I, to I feel like you've well. seen the other movie he's made though. It's um the other one that most people have seen rather because um, he made a movie this summer that nobody saw. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's it's got Aubrey Plaza in it, and it's about she's she finds a Craigslist ad for somebody going back in time. I oh, forget the title yes. of the movie. Yep, I know what you're talking about. I never did see it, but I really wanted to. Um, that, yeah, something about time traveling. Yes, the, that one. Yeah. He made that. Interesting. And then he got Jurassic World because Steven Spielberg liked that. And Interesting. And then because Steven Spielberg recommended him and it made a billion dollars. That's why right. uh, Disney <laughs> was all over him. I heard he. Uh, I heard he didn't really want to like. He wanted to kind of do his own thing. I don't know. That's the rumor mill that I heard from like tabloid magazines or whatever. Huh. But that he kind of wanted to do his own thing and didn't really want to work within the Star Wars system. And it, and that seems to be like a running trend. It, like it seems like that's why Lord and Miller were fired from Han Solo is because they didn't want to make the movie the way Kathleen Kennedy wanted to make the Star Wars movies. If that makes sure. sense. Sure. No, it does absolutely. And um, uh, I, I don't agree with it, but I, I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, it's interesting to me that like people like Ryan Johnson, who's making The Last Jedi, he uh, he seems to be like fine. Everybody's like, oh yeah, Ryan Johnson, I got to do my own thing, and I I, I had total freedom. And these other people are being like fired because they can't play within the rules, and it just makes me wonder like like what's going on behind the scenes i don't know they're not they're not as transparent as they used to be when when george owned them oh yeah for sure like you can you just know that there's so much going on like behind the scenes that we're never going to get the full story of what what's exactly happening yeah like what a fucking shit show like uh, of a summer it must be for kathleen kennedy like (laughs) right like you fired two directors now granted you only do one movie a year so two directors is a pretty big deal (laughs) yeah that's fucking crazy (laughs) I feel it's, like uh, what part of what ha- had to have contributed to episode nine, though, is um, Carrie Fisher's death. I, 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 there was a quote by Kathleen Kennedy where she said, you know, The Force Awakens was Harrison Ford's movie. Um, uh, the Last Jedi is Mark Hamill's movie. And then the next one is going to be Carrie Fisher's movie. And that was before she died. Wow. And I feel like... Uh, uh, that probably contributed a lot to why Colin Trevorrow quit. Like it just didn't work within uh, what it with with what uh, Lucasfilm was trying to do at that point. Oh, and that has to be so hard because you've you've already written the script at this point. Um, you already know like what's going to happen, and if it does have a, a big part for uh, Carrie Fisher, like you have to you have to rework the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that. That has to be hard for the director too. Like you probably get like really close to these people and you get really close to the story you're trying to tell. So when all that just like goes, uh, goes by the wayside, like where, like, where do you go from there? Like that, that just has to be tough. So I can, I don't, if it was mutual and he did walk away, I completely understand. Um, Yeah. I, I I know they had like uh, screenwriters in, uh, before he was fired. So I feel like they had, they had a hard time like reworking whatever, they had thought up until that point and they kind of needed a fresh take on it. And that makes sense. It's going to be really tough. Um, I mean, it, the Carrie, Carrie Fisher's loss was, was tougher for all, all star Wars fans just cause she, she brought so much to the, uh, the franchise, but she just seeing her come back in episode seven. A lot of people were excited to see, see her kind of continue to grow throughout this, um, the series and, and see where she, where she kind of ended up. So I'm, I'm kind of I'm excited that we're still going to get some footage with her in episode eight, if um, if what I've heard is correct. But it, it'll it's just kind of sad to hear that that last movie was supposed to kind of be her her swan song, and now now we don't get to see that. Yeah, the, which which makes me like I wonder how one of the things I'm interested to see with the Last Jedi is how they leave Leia's story and where they kind of end it, you know. Yeah, because they, I mean, you basically have to write in a death you might not have even had written in before. Like, they might have ended the saga, and she could have still been alive. Yeah. 
And so like now you have to kill off this like beloved character and it it's almost like you're you're not really like betraying the fans, but it's like you're ki- like how do you kill her off again? She's not going to be able to film a death scene. Right. Unless she well, no she wouldn't have been planned to die if episode 9 was her movie. So yeah, yeah, how do you how do you like fake a death scene and like not outrage your community again like I've already been through this once, why are you making me like cry again? Right. Yeah. Like it, that has to be so hard to do. So it it'll be really interesting to see how episode 8 um deals with that. Or if yeah. they deal with it at all. Maybe they Maybe her part in this was so small, they just, like, throw it on the episode 9 director, like, oh, it's your problem. <laughs> like the the J.J. Uh, Abrams method. Yep, your problem now. <laughs> right. Yep, I, uh, here's Snoke. Uh, <laughs> have fun. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, um, I, I just hope they, they do it right, man. I, I know that kind of contradicts what I said before um, with, you know, people telling directors what to do. I just want them to... <laughs> Um, I just want them to to do Carrie Fisher justice and not not just like rot her off. Yeah, I think that'll be interesting. I think it I think it is going to be where they just kind of hand it off to who's ever doing nine and just like have fun, bro. <laughs> right. Well, well uh, with with that with episode nine, who do you think like if you if you could pick just like maybe a few it doesn't have to be just one, but who would you want to take over? Oh man, in a dream world where it wasn't owned by Disney, Quentin Tarantino, but uh <laughs> <laughs> or like Steven Spielberg, but I think he's too expensive at this point. Um yeah. like Brad Bird would be awesome, but I think he's doing Incredibles 2. Yeah. Yeah, he's doing Incredibles 2, which I'm I mean, that comes out next year, so it, he can't be I'm sure it's in its final stages at this point as far as like actual directing and stuff. Yeah, that's true. I just, I, they seem to be, like, trying to get, like, indie directors, and I don't, I guess I don't know, like, of an indie director that I would go, yeah, Star Wars, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I can't really, like I said, I'm not too familiar with, with directors as it is, but I'm, one that I'm, um, I'm kind of excited for just to see what he does, it's the guy that did uh, the most recent Kong movie. Um, Ooh, yeah. Kong was fun, man. It like, was. I, I've feel like i heard a lot of people didn't like it but it, like you said it was fun like i enjoyed watching it um i didn't expect it to be like funny i just thought it was kind of be a, a serious action movie but it did have uh, some comedic parts in there and there are even some um some metal gear solid references which is my favorite game series and he's oh, actually nice, going dude. That's awesome. yeah it, it was really cool because he uh he's actually going to be uh directing a metal gear solid movie which I don't, i've i've wanted for a long time um, and it's kind of strange that it's it's actually happening now. Like he's actually working with uh, Hideo Kojima, um, which I don't understand how it hap- how that works. If for those that don't know, Hideo Kojima created Metal Gear Solid, but then Konami kind of like fired him, but they maintain the rights. So ah. how how is he like working with Kojima on this? Because he has to be working with Konami as well. I don't know. It has to be like a like a. Uh, a nightmare of a situation I have to imagine, but, but yeah, I feel, just, I feel like he just gets like a different title. Like he can't work for the, the company <laughs> if he's like the director of a video game, if you will. But if he's like a supervisor, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> right. Exactly. So he's basically just there. He's kind of like the George Lucas to where they, they go to him for like suggestions yeah, or if they like, go to George at all. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know on rogue one, like they just like, it, like he saw it it was like cool yay george saw it he liked it yay <laughs> right yeah because he actually had like positive things to say about it if i remember right didn't he I, i'm i'm sure i mean he's not there to shit on his own like uh <laughs> franchise <you know. laughs> he's, he's still got stock in disney he's not like <laughs> and that i remember last year or this past year just a couple months ago at celebration and they, they brought him there he you could just tell like that that dude is just Either he just didn't want to be there, or he was just a really awkward dude, or a mixture of, of the two. I just feel like, like he, he's so over it, man. Right. <laughs> like, he's like, I just sold Star Wars for however much money. Like, I don't have to deal with any of this BS anymore. Like, he didn't, fi- um, <clears throat> he didn't film in Empire Strikes Back. That was directed by Irvin Kirshner. He didn't do uh, Return of the Jedi either. Like, I feel like it g- grew into this giant thing that he was just like, ugh. I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> right. It, it kind of like, it grew out of his hands. Like it probably just like, just like took off so quickly. He didn't know what to do. Yeah. Like he, he was like this weird experimental director before he, uh, before he got Star Wars. 
And it is like I feel like he wanted to do weird experimental stuff, and Star Wars was just the thing he was known for. And he could never make his other weird things he wanted to make. And he's just, fuck, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> right. And it's kind of strange. Like, you, you say that, and now that he's sold it, I wonder why he why he isn't um, wanting to, like, do any of these other stories that he had. Or if he's just, like, if it just burned him out so much that he's just, like, I'm I'm just done with everything. Yeah, I feel like he's just got to be done with everything, man. Like. He's got enough money to last him till he dies, that's for sure. So, like, what, what, he doesn't have to really do anything. He's just living his life out. And people call him once a year and say, hey, you want to see the new Star Wars movie and say nice things? <laughs> oh, right, right. We'll, we'll, give you, we'll give you a nice fat uh, royalty check if you, uh, if you do. <laughs> right. right. Does, he get, does he get anything, or is it like it's completely sold so he doesn't get anything from it? Well, I know he owns stock in Disney, so, like... Star Wars doing well, obviously he does well. Um, okay, but I don't, I don't. He doesn't have any like creative control over Lucasfilm anymore. Right. Yeah. I mean, that that was his decision, so I, I can't can't say that you know it's a a, a bad one. Whatever you <laughs> want to do with your franchise, man. Yeah, you know, I I, I can't say it's I, it's great that it's uh, in other people's hands though, not just because. I, I think the prequels were shit or anything, but it's like it's nice that other people get to like play around in that playground, you know. Exactly, and it, it'll be interesting too now that we are coming to a close of the uh, the movie saga, as well as because um, I, I really enjoy the animated shows. Um, Clone Wars was really good, and I started watching Rebels, and you can tell like they're definitely made for kids, but there is some like really cool like background stuff and storytelling there um, that kind of ties a few loose ends together. Um, and I know Rebels is kind of coming to an end too, and that takes place between uh, three and four, yeah. If I recall, yeah. Um, so now that that's kind of coming to a close, what's their next move going to be? Because they, I mean, uh, I feel like these uh, animated shows do so well, they'd be kind of crazy not to do another one. I know they have their um, their new Star Wars shorts that they do, but it's like, yeah. If I remember right, it's not even like an actual show. It's just kind of like small little like. Maybe a couple minute, five clips minute clips. Of, yeah, yeah. So nothing really there that's sustainable. So you have your movies coming to your main movies coming to a close, and your only series at the time coming to a close. So what's your next step? I I feel like they they're gonna go one of two directions. I heard uh, a rumor that after nine they're gonna get push TV. They're gonna be pushing TV like Marvel was pushing TV, and they'll still have movies that come out like every two years. But they'll have like Star Wars TV shows, like Marvel has TV shows, and since Disney's getting their own like streaming um, thing, I I feel like that's that's totally where it might be going. Right, like they're leading up to that streaming service because that I just saw that they they're actually pulling like their their Marvel, and I don't know how this is going to work. I know that they're pulling Disney and Marvel movies, but does that mean they're pulling those Marvel TV shows that were like produced? Like those are pro- like those are like those Netflix originals, so they were like produced by Netflix, right? Yeah, I don't know how that's gonna work either, man. I've been wondering that myself. That's yeah. And I just hate that where like Netflix itself is great. I love Netflix, but now like everyone's trying to get their hands in it, and they're pulling their shows from Netflix, which really sucks. Like you're, it's it's just detrimental to the consumer because now we're just gonna get back into um, where we were before. Like everyone went to Netflix to cut cable. But now you're going to be paying just as much as you were for cable because you have to pay your $10 for Netflix, your $20 for Disney, um, DC uh, starting their own streaming service. Like it, It's just going to get out of hand eventually. We're going to be right back where we started. I feel like what's probably going to happen at some point is that people will start like rotating their subscriptions, right? Since it all stays yeah. on that place. You kind of like you have Hulu and Netflix for six months and then you go and you have these other two for six months and then or, you know, whatever. Sure. Of time. <laughs> no, I, like, I feel that. like that's totally where the future is headed when it comes to like streaming. I mean, I'll even do that with uh, with HBO now. Like I'll I'll turn on my HBO subscription until Game of Thrones is over. And if <laughs> nothing else is on at the time, I'll just right. uh, I'll cut it off. I mean, right. There's good stuff to see see on there, but is it worth it to pay like the fifteen dollars a month? Probably not. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. Like you have that subscription, and then while while the show's coming out, you just watch 
the <laughs> other shows that they have and then you delete the subscription and move on to the next thing and get all their shows it's like yeah that's totally where it's right. gonna go and with uh with that being said kind of wrapping up where we think everything is going to go i think that's a good uh end point for this podcast any uh any final thoughts before we uh close this out we're like oh man i i had a thought i this okay this is kind of uh star wars nerd stuff yeah okay so George Lucas, so after episode three, George Lucas was going to make a TV show on HBO. That was his goal. He wanted to make like a serious uh, uh, show about um, Star Wars set between Revenge of the Sith and A New Hope. And it would just be like a bunch of different stories every week set in the Star Wars universe. I feel like what would be super dope is if they took like those ideas that he wrote. Because there were scripts that exist. I know they exist. Um, to take those ideas and turn them into like spinoff movies and just run that spinoff train for a bit and then come back 10 years and do like the next saga movies. That's what I yeah. hope they do from episode nine on and onward. I think that'd be great. Um, cause you, you have these new characters that you're introducing to kind of not to phase out the the old characters, but I mean that, that's kind of what's happening. Yeah, like you have you have Ray, Poe, and Finn that are going to replace the the Luke, Leia, and Han of of um, yesteryear. So it it wouldn't make sense to introduce them and just stop after these three movies. You you build up these characters, so why not use them again? But I think we should definitely take a break from the the saga movies, get get some more information of the universe as a whole, like you said. And then we can jump back into the saga movies and kind of revisit, okay, what are Ray Finn and Poe up to? Like what what's going on in the the main universe? Yeah, I don't I don't want Star Wars to lose its specialness, you know? Like I don't want like Star Wars movies coming out to be like a rare thing. I I, I or I I do want them to be a rare thing rather. Like I want like I want it to be like a special like oh shit, Star Wars is coming out, not like oh man, another Star Wars movie's coming out this year. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You don't want to be um, uh, like a like a Saw franchise. Like, oh, uh, yeah. another October, we're getting Saw fifteen. Right. I'm sure it'll be great. Right. <laughs> I don't, and I don't expect it would it would get there. But now that it's owned by Disney, I'm not. <laughs> I I won't say for sure. Like, it was kind of cool that we waited. Um, I mean, such a long time. Like, I I never expected another Star Wars movie as a kid. Like, I just accepted that. Yeah. Hey, these are. I remember, like, me to put some put this into perspective. Me and Ben have been friends since elementary school. I remember talking to Ben in like probably second grade, and he's telling me all these theories about like Han and Leia having twins and stuff, and how there's actually nine movies. Now, granted, this was in like '97, <laughs> and we're like Ben's already telling me that there's like nine movies in this saga, and I'm like, oh, that's cool. But then like they like they were never going to get made. I'm like, man, that's really sad. Like I would love to see these movies. And then that like makes me feel later. better, like saying that I knew that there was going to be nine movies back then. That I, so I'm not going to feel as dumb when I come back and listen to this in like 2079. <laughs> <laughs> right. That uh no, it was it was really cool because that that kind of opened up Star Wars for me. Um, because you like Ben's always been like my my Star Wars uh information go to. Like if there's anything Star Wars, Ben Ben is going to know it. So I um just to like learn all this stuff. Um, at an early age before even the the prequel trilogy started was really cool and then when it actually when we did get the the prequel trilogy that just like blew my mind i'm like we're getting more star wars that little kid is going to be darth vader like that like it it just it everything was connected and it was coming together it was just cool I th it, it, it it completed a circle man it was almost nice the way it used to be you know it was like this perfect little like circular thing I don't know. And it, I'm gonna it, I'm gonna miss only having six movies someday. <laughs> yeah, it 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 did kind of. I guess it itself it wrapped it up, itself up nicely, but at the same time, I, I I'm always gonna want more Star Wars. Um, so I, I think you're right. I I think we can appreciate the the original six uh, that we had, and we can still enjoy the the others that make it this this full nine movie saga, but. I don't know, man. There's just something about Star Wars I don't think I'll ever get tired of. That's true. I, I and, and I say I that, so. and every time there's a new Star Wars movie, I'm there at midnight. So, like, I'm not like. <laughs> right. 
I just I hope it's in good hands with Disney. Um, I just I hope they don't just pump out movies just just to bring in the money. Please, please Disney, please. <laughs> if they did an HBO series, I would be all about that. Something that's a little bit darker, um, a little little grittier that we could actually see a different side of the Star Wars universe. I mean, if they have their own streaming site, I don't see why they couldn't. Like, yeah, it's... yeah. It, it almost and now that you mention that, it's almost like they're leading up to that. Like it, <laughs> right? like they're like moving all their movies over to this separate uh, streaming site. Like, yeah, you wouldn't that's... do that if you weren't leading up to something big. Yeah, yeah, th- that's totally where this is going. Because <laughs> right, so, like, what so... they only they only have a, like. They have eight movies at this point, nine, ten movies when it comes out, you know? Like, yeah. Nobody's going to want it if they're a Star Wars fan just for that. you got to have something that's, like, keeping them coming back. Exactly. Yeah, and, and so mark mark this date in your calendars, September 10th of 2017, when uh, when they uh, announce a, a big Netflix or a, a Netflix-style uh, streaming service uh, launching with a Star Wars series, you heard it here first. Exclusive. <laughs> Uh, i hope i hope so that that would be dope (laughs) right (laughs) i mean they at this point in time if it's just disney and marvel they're probably not going to get my money like any any big disney or marvel movie i probably see it once in the theaters and that's probably enough i'll I'll probably buy it when it comes out on blu-ray just because i'm i like physical movies personally but i'm not going to pay to stream disney and, and marvel but if they were like look we have an exclusive star wars show You'd be like, yep. uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. Exactly. <laughs> yep. Because I, I think that's... Well, actually, now that I think... Do they release Netflix series on Blu-ray? Like, can you buy, like, Stranger Things or... I know, or for, or I know for sure you can buy House of Cards because I, I go use DVD shopping and I've seen it. I know for oh, nice. sure you can buy House of Cards, but I don't know about the Marvel movies. That, that's a good question. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder how that works for them. Like, do they want to keep it exclusive to where, like, you can't buy DVDs of it, so you have to use the streaming service? Yeah, I, I feel like you would want to, right? I was kind of surprised to see House of Cards. That's why I know it, because it was just like, what? Like, <laughs> why? Right, isn't that like your, that's your whole, like, marketing plan, right? Exactly, <laughs> right. That's why you, people pay for it, right? It's not, like, free. Right. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I mean, the the Netflix guys are into all sorts of risky business maneuvers with that whole movie pass thing starting up. Yeah, ten dollars a month and pay, uh, see as many movies as you well one movie a day, not as many movies as you want, but still like thirty movies a month for ten bucks. That's that's I, pretty I'm, crazy. I'm interested to see how long that lasts. I'm not going to predict this, but I I think uh, I think uh, it's not going to last long. I would love to be wrong. But I don't think it's like a sustainable business with movie theaters hating it and like they've they've got to not be making their money back. There's no way it's it too cheap. <laughs> yeah, it like it doesn't make sense to me on on a few different um, uh, planes here. the The first one, if because I've heard multiple things, I've heard that Movie Pass actually buys these tickets, so like the the movie theater should be getting like the the money. So I don't understand why theaters are hating it. Yeah, right? Like, what what's the downside if you're getting the same money that you would have? Um, but then that, that also goes back to MoviePass themselves. If you are paying, like, the, the full cost of these movies and only charging people for basically one, less than one in most cases. Like, I think I'd probably pay, like, $13 if I go see something in IMAX. Um, like, what? Where's where's the benefit? Like, where do you guys actually make money here? Right, exactly. I, I don't think it's sustainable, man. Like, it's a great, like, take advantage of it while it exists because <laughs> it's sure. not going to be around next Christmas. <laughs> like, it, it interests me because there's there's so many movies that come out that I never see in theaters. Uh, j- just, like, uh, to be honest, it's just cost. Like, if it's something that I'm not sure of, like, I really, like, I wanted to see Baby Driver and I want to see it. But I don't know, like, if, if I don't see it at, like, on launch day, like for a Marvel or a, a Disney movie or DC or whatever, I probably won't go to the movie theater to see it like that. I just don't have time for it throughout the week. Yeah. Or I don't yeah. have time for it. Yeah. So, but it's, it's but like an event. Like, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole thing you have to plan for. So yeah. like I, like I just bought my tickets for Thor Ragnarok. So I know exactly when I have to be off of work and where we're going to go. But with movie pass, you actually have to go to the theater and get your ticket. So you can't really do that for like launch day movies. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, but still, like, if, if I had something like that, I probably would, like, you only have to see two movies for it to, like, you know, basically get your your money's worth out of it. Right. So I don't know. I, I'm interested to see where it goes and, and what, what comes of it. But, yeah, like you said, get on it while you can because that's, <laughs> that's, like, an insane deal. I can't even see how it's how it's even around now after <laughs> after you know just a couple weeks it's been out i feel like somebody accidentally hit the wrong button and said like oops right not 9.99 that's not what we meant <laughs> right because before it was like 50 dollars a month i think yeah which even then like honestly you can still get your money back from that like if you're a really avid movie goer yeah you could absolutely. you could do that no problem absolutely and I'd, I'd love to be that person that like goes to see all these new movies and um, like being a cinephile has always like intrigued me. It's just time consuming, man. Like you have to, like just watching one movie a day. That's like two hours out of my out of my day that I just don't don't really have, man. It's true. Movies are so long. <laughs> like even the um, like I I wanted to see it because my uh, my friend just saw it. He said it was really good. It was like two and a half hours long. <laughs> but, like for a horror movie. Uh, but apparently the original is like three hours long, so I, I'm sure they you know try to stay true to that in some sense. But <laughs> like like you said, movies are an event anymore. Like you can't just it's not like sitting down to read a book. Like you actually have to like make time and yeah, and you have to pay attention. And like I I totally understand people like sometimes when I tell people like I like watching movies and they're like Ugh. I mean movies are like I have to like sit down and like pay attention and like I can't oh, yeah. do anything for an hour and a half. I get it. <laughs> and that, that's why, like, when, I, when I'm doing work, when I'm doing, like, design work or, like, editing, I always have, like, parks or the office in the background. I can't watch anything new. Like, right. it's just going to be there for background noise. Right. But yeah, I think, uh, I think with that being said, we're, uh, we're at our uh, little over our hour mark, so that'll probably be a good uh, stopping point. So once again, Ben, I uh, appreciate you jumping on the show with us. Always a pleasure to have you here. Glad to be here. Awesome, and we'll uh, we'll definitely have you back soon uh, to talk about Marvel, uh, Sony, and uh, geez, Fox as well, I guess. Talk about that. But as always, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, uh, you can always check us out on YouTube, Google Play, or iTunes. Make sure you subscribe there if you want to hear more. Uh, we come out with a new podcast every Monday. And uh, feel free to leave some comments. Let us know what you think of uh, the Star Wars universe, where it's headed. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, see you next time.